Welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. Today we are back with the Unicor IXO Golf Launch Monitor. You guys may have seen our first look video. We did an unboxing for you, showed you the installation where the unit's located, and then went over the new View software, which is the club fitting software that comes with the IXO. So if you're not familiar with the unit, this is a high speed camera infrared system that sits three and a half feet in front of the ball. Okay, it's actually using non-marked ball technology. So they're using a high, defini high definition camera that actually zooms in and reads the dimples and markings on the ball to get your spin and ball data. All right, so that's new technology because before the QED system from Unicore was using a three dot pattern to read that. All right, so you can use a ball of your choice, which is uh, obviously important to some players. And now they have that ability with the new Unicore IXO. So they're also using enhanced club data, which takes advantage of stickers on the club. I'm gonna see if I can actually get these uh, to show up without washing out a little bit, but you can see the one sticker that I'm pointing to. There we go, that's not too bad. It's a vertical uh, sticker here and then a square here, okay? So um, those can be placed on your club when you're looking for that enhanced club data. All right, uh, one question that came up is, is people said, well, what if I have friends over? I don't wanna put stickers on my club, but I want the IXO so I can use a premium ball and I wanna play simulation, E6, TGC, Creative Golf, et cetera. Um, great news, you don't have to. So the stickers are for the enhanced club data, um, and that's gonna be available inside the view fitting software. But if you're just looking to play simulation golf, you don't have to worry about the stickers, but it's available for when you need it. All right, so I thought that was great. Everybody should understand that. Um, today, we're going to show you a lot more than we did before, because I just hit a couple pitching wedges, I wanna say last time, um, just to kind of give you guys a rundown of the data that was available inside of view. So today, we're actually gonna hit uh, some 58 degree wedges to show you some high spinning balls, and then we're gonna show you uh, a mid iron, I'll probably Probably use a seven iron um, and then some driver okay so we'll go over all that for you guys really look forward to showing it all to you I've been using this for a little while now doing some testing with Unicore we wanted to make sure the sticker placement and everything was working properly and uh, from what I can tell so far everything's working great so ready to kind of give you guys a full in-depth overview uh, and review of the Unicore IXO and the new view software so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to shrink my camera down first We'll go ahead and bring that down to the lower left so it's well out of your guys' way. Nothing is blocking. I had a logo pop up on me one time that was blocking a data parameter. And then you can see I already created my sessions over here. So I have uh, the 58, the 7 iron, and the Rogue all ready to go. Figured that would save us some time. And uh, we should be good to go to start with the 58. Okay, so let me just grab my ball here. And brand new Pro V1, like I was saying. I figured that we would. Uh, Try to hit like four shots with the 58 um, so I could show you guys the cluster again and then we'll hit a few shots with the other clubs and that way you guys can get a full overview here. All right, decent shot for me. Um, not amazing by any means. Carry of 87, which is close to what I was aiming for. It's aiming for about 90 yards or so. Uh, not as much spin as I usually get. But I can see my club path was way from the inside. I'll try to correct that. Um, you can see I had left side spin on that. Launch of 35 degrees. And then once we hit a couple shots, I'll show you guys all the advanced data. All right. So let's hit a few more here first. All right. A little better that time. Still coming a uh, little from the inside, that's for sure. Uh, 10,648 on the backspin on that one, 87 yards. If I really crank at my 58, it's about a hundred yard club. I mean, I'm talking full swing. I usually don't, don't do that. Um, that's, that's been my, my distance for the most part. I know I play with some people that can hit a 58 a lot farther than me. So I figured I'd give you guys kind of a good understanding of what my shots are. So, Nice again, 89 yards. Uh, club pass still coming away from the inside, but that's all right. Um, launch angle 35. You can obviously see your ball and club speed. Uh, back spin above 10,000 again. I like how there was a lot less uh, left spin on that ball, though. I may be coming from the inside, but I'm at least trying to control my club face. All right, look at that one right down the middle all right and so that was an 84 yard carry 
uh, club pass it was a lot less from the inside, only 3.4 degrees, launched at 34 degrees, ball speed 75, club speed 75, uh, backspin 10,747. Cool. And then I don't think I mentioned, if you see the data on the right, you can actually choose what you'd like to show as additional data. I put it all up there. We're doing a demonstration. I wanted to show you guys everything that's available. So you can see the side total, all right, 0.3 yards to the left, my apex, 72 feet. Distance to apex, 49 yards. Descent angle, 45 degrees. Flight time, 4.8 seconds. Face to path, uh, left, 12.4 degrees. And then uh, club face angle, left, 9 degrees. Okay, so let's look at all of that inside of the software. What I love is, is this really shows me, you know, what I need to work on because I know my swing has been off lately. Um, and it's really a lot of data. I've been consulting with my coach using the software. Um, so you can see the 2D overhead dispersion. All right. That's really cool. You can see I hit a couple off to the left. That last one was right down the middle. Now you can see these, and I should say down in the bottom, that's your side 2D apex. All right. Trajectory view. Okay. And then on your groupings, there's that cluster that I like. Kind of shows me how tight of a cluster I have going on with my 58 degree wedge. And then you have a ring available as well. You can do either. And then let's go on to what I'm sure a lot of people want to see. And that's this advanced club data. All right. It's showing you dynamic loft, attack angle, launch angle, backspin, face angle, club path, side angle, side spin, vertical impact, your horizontal impact and your lie angle. Okay. So you can see how I was a little toe down there. Now, what's interesting is you get an illustrated version of where the ball's impacting and also a photo version. Okay. So um, if you want to verify how close the illustration is, well, looky there. And you can see how I was toe down in that. All right. Look how that club, the toe is down on impact. What I find amazing is, is you can literally read the Titleist one on the ball. No wonder they can use dimple technology, um, reading the, the spin of the ball and collecting ball data that way, um, because you can see how high definition that you know uh, image is. So what you'll also notice, now I hit those very similar, but if you look closely, you can actually see all of the gray dots of where my ball was hitting. So it gives you an idea. It looks like I'm hitting you know a little more towards the heel. So if I were to work on this, I'd work on getting that ball just up a little bit and a little more towards the toe because all of my shots were hitting, you know, kind of heel low. All right. Um, and I can also open up my full swing video and replay that, which also is really high definition. Um, let's go ahead and move it back a couple frames and we'll just go frame by frame with you guys right at impact. You can see the ball. Look at that. You can see it spinning. You can see the logo on the ball. All right. You can see how closed I was right after impact. I mean, inside out and closed. That's me. I'm working on it at least. Um, and then we can go to, now here's the thing. And maybe at the end of the video, I could click these on, but I want to do a whole separate video. You'll see guys, I have all of my lights on and they're not tuned in for, uh, the swing video. So this is not what it looks like at all because, because we were recording, I didn't want to flip everything on. So you'll see, I kind of have some pulsating going on. And it, this is a great example of how different, uh, the light should be, you know, when you are recording for a swing video. So I still have these running in the background and you can see how clear they are, but I can show you an example of when I click all the lights on. All right. And have it properly lit what it looks like, but that is recording in the background. Okay. I'm going to do a whole separate video, an in-depth overview of the swing optics system. Um, here's your shots. Okay. Which gives you the averages and max. All right. Here's that session. You can see the different sessions I've already created. And then here's all the data tiles that are available. This is everything. Okay. That was available on that shot. All right. And you can drag these around. If you want backspin down here, you can bring it down here. You want ball speed down here. You know, you can rearrange these any way you want. All right. So I'll give you guys just a second to look at all of those data parameters. Okay. That are available. And then we'll move on to the next club. All right. So I'm going to go back here to session. I'll go to my front view. We'll select seven iron and we should be good to go. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and grab seven iron. Okay. I'm not going to go crazy at this. Uh, just try to hit some decent sevens for you guys. 
not trying to rip anything down there. It's more about data and demonstration. That was a pretty good seven iron for me. I mean, you can see it's my normal inside out and a little closed. Um, it had 800 left side spin, but 165, that's a decent seven for me. I mean, I, I can get it up to 170, 175 if I'm ripping at it. Um, but yeah, for just a nice average seven iron, I'll take that all day long. So let's just hit a couple of these. We don't have to get clusters really going on these. That would be an interesting one to look at. That was thin. That was kind of a miss for me. And we can see it, it picked all that data up, even though it was that thin, thin and left. Let's see if we can get one more here. I kind of like showing my misses. Um, I mean, I'm not proud of them, that's for sure, but I can show you guys the performance of misses. There we go. Not too bad. You can see how I'm, you know, like a, I call it a push draw. It calls it a push hook on here. The draw makes me feel better. <laughs> so let's look at this really quick. Now I want to show you something. So you can select your shots and you can see I selected a color for this club. So your red is your trace and you can see that like teal color inside of the trace and that's because we're on the seven iron. Okay. Now if I wanted to show my 58 and my seven iron all at once, I can do that. Okay. There's the blue I selected for the 58. All right. There's the session, which is the seven iron and there's the last shot by itself. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the side and top view. You can see I was definitely pulling those balls a little bit. I was pushing them outside and pulling them back. Um, that one was a big miss. So I want to show you guys what you can do here. So I can actually select that shot, which is this shot right here. Notice how it is tracing that so I can see it. Okay. Um, there's our grouping. If I would have hit one more shot, it would have showed a cluster. Okay. And then now this is what I wanted to look at. So why did that feel so weird? Well, look how much lower on the club that was than my other shots. Okay. Um, that definitely is why I felt like it was thin. Well, look there, it was thin. Um, I love that zoomed in impact, you know, view of the ball. It's not going to lie. If you question that uh, illustration at all, which I, I really love, you can just go right to your photo here and you can say, what happened? Well, I mean, I definitely hit the ball thin. It was even a little towards the, the toe kind of, um, you know, it says horizontal center, actually. It just, it kind of looks just a tad to me like on the toe, but honestly, my club's a little closed, which once again, I kind of like that illustration, but you can see that 11 millimeters low. And then I had my lie angle down four degrees. So I'll let you guys kind of look at the rest of that. Here's the rest of your data. You can always blow this up. Let's look at a thin shot on camera. What does it look like inside out and thin? Wow. Um, and so th this is what's allowing me to really learn, um, you know, how thin was it? Where was it on the club? Um, I don't have a perfect feel so far, you know, uh, with my experience in golf. I mean, I've been golfing for a long time, but, uh, you know, I haven't taken the necessary training or don't have the, you know, advanced knowledge that a PGA professional would have. And this software, I believe, really gives me that feedback to consult with them and learn and be able to work on my game more myself, which I like. Um, so there's all the, the data for that thin shot. Okay. I can, I can go to that third shot and then I can go to the first shot. So see, how I'm just kind of selecting these cause I'm under the, so, uh, the, the, <laughs> the shot tab instead of the session tab. Okay. That's how you can do that. All right. And then we're going to go to session. Now we're going to go to the front view and we're going to go to the rogue driver. All right, guys. So you'll see that it just got much brighter inside the studio. And I figured if I was going to fire off a driver for you guys, why wouldn't I do it with the swing optics system on so you guys can see how that performs with the high speed of a driver swing? Okay. You can see how, um, you know, the club and the hands are actually being captured without a bunch of motion blur, which is really cool. Let's see if we can get a good drive off here. Not a bad drive for me. It looks like my face must have been a little closed, but I got 
you know, the distance I like to get. I like to get up there 250, 260 carry is what I've been working towards. Um, all those numbers look pretty good, especially me knowing that my path is too far inside out. I think that'll be a really good example though. All right. Um, club speed around 100, ball speed around 150. That's, that's really normal for me. Let's go to our side and top view really quick. All right, you can see that that ball obviously was, it has, a, you know, dispersion, that 2D overhead dispersion has that ball on the left. And then you can see the trajectory there of my drive. Now, if you go to groupings, okay, we're farther out now. We have three different groupings and you can see the driver much farther out. Let's go to club data, okay? So for me, all of that's looking really good. I mean, I'm not a pure ball striker with my driver right now, so a lot of work to do. But I wanted to point something out to you guys that I think is really important on how someone like me as an amateur can understand this data. Every data point is color coded. So the dynamic loft, 20.5 degrees, is that amber line that you're seeing, okay? It's measuring that from a vertical line, all right? And that's 20.5 degrees versus straight vertical. The tack angle, okay, you can see here is the red line, all right, and it's measuring that. And then the, the launch angle from, from the dead center point up is the blue line. Backspin obviously is coded with the arrows, all right? Same thing with the face angle. You can see that it was open 4.2 degrees. Easy to depict with the color coding, okay? My club path coming from the inside, all right? 5.7 degrees. And then we have our vertical and horizontal impact, all right, and our lie angle, okay? Lie angle is showing once again with the, uh, you know, the, the you know, orangish yellow color. And you have our illustrated, but also our photo. Now look at that. <laughs> Hitting with the driver, it can capture the title as the number still, which I think is awesome. Let's look at our slow motion. I like going frame by frame. Here's my driver coming in. Boom. You can actually see the ball start to compress in that frame, which I think is just awesome. You can see the ball spinning as well. All right. Uh, that was a decent drive for me. I'll just be honest with you. I've been working really hard on my driver. I totally lost my swing. I hurt my back like midwinter, and it was like I was a new golfer after that. It was it was quite wild. This is what I wanted to show you guys with driver that I thought you'd really appreciate is that I've been tuning in my cameras, uh, making little adjustments with my light and everything. I you can play this at eighth speed, okay? But I like dragging it because it maximizes the full frame rate. And you can see how smooth that is. You can read Callaway on my driver right there. Okay. Um, so I feel like I have the image, you know, really decent right now. Um, I'm sure you guys could just tear apart my swing, but let's go ahead and look at it. So there's full backswing. Man, I really bring in that club back, you know, far too far in my opinion. My head's turning. Um, probably leads to a lot of my misses. And then here we go, full down swing. Look at that club flex. Do you see that? Look at the flex in the club. All right. And then here we go. Right. Impact. Now, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can tune that in even any better. I mean, I can, you know, pick out that shaft very easily. There is like a tiny, tiny bit of blur on the shaft and the club, which is acceptable to me. I mean, I'll try to tweak it a little more. You can see how I have it crystal clear on the, the back camera, the forward facing camera, just a tiny, tiny bit. But I mean, I don't, I don't think I can get it any better. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Um, and then you guys can obviously use all the drawing tools I've shown you guys before. So, you know, if you wanted to use an angle tool, all right, now I have a, I have a touch screen. This makes it very simple for me to do. Okay. I can take my finger and pretty much draw anything I want. All right. Um, I could do, you know, if let's say we were working on like lofts or something, I can just draw on it. All right. You can go to file and save it. All right. You can actually, you know, pin those, uh, those things. You can do everything. But here we go. Let's watch this in eighth motion. See if my head moves all around. I really do like dragging it, though. It's awesome. There you go. There's my drive. You guys can tell me all the bad things about it. Hey, at least it's at least I'm putting the effort in to work with my coach right now and improve it the most I can. You can see I had left side spin on there. Um, you know, it uh, wasn't 
you know, an amazing shot. I mean, I, I, the interesting thing that I'm going to ask him about that I don't know a ton about is attack angle of the driver, you know, where an amateur is and where you should be working towards. Um, because I think that's high. I want to say the pros are down near zero or one degree or something like that. So we'll have to check that out. Um, so I'm going to just go, go ahead and take this. And then of course, now I'm going to be all probably, let me shut this light off. See if that's any better. Um, of course, I have my bright light in front still on. Uh, let me turn that off because that's just way too bright. We'll wrap this video up for you guys. I really hope that you guys enjoyed, uh, you know, the IXO kind of full overview. You know, we did wedges today to show you the capabilities of it reading those high spin numbers and high launches, um, seven irons, and then of course driver. Um, you know, what I was thinking about doing is, is I'll try to get my buddy, uh, my swing coach down here and have him really fire off some shots and show you guys some control, uh, which he said he would do. So stay tuned for that. We'll see if we can do that soon. I'm going to have him kind of go over some of the data with us, you know, and explain how you can work on your game. The biggest thing I try to tell people is, is, you know, this IXO system, this is, is designed for a club fitter to use. It's designed for a PGA instructor to use, but an amateur can also take it, put it into their home, use it as their simulator. And if they understand the data, all right, take the time to understand it. It's very easy to work on your game. You could take the data as simple as what we have up on the screen right now, just ball impact. And, and just obviously you want to hit it in the center of your club. Um, and you can work on little adjustments that allow you to do that. And I, I appreciate that. I think that that's a, a great part of the software. I think that's a great part of golf technology and how it's evolving. Um, you know, and we're obviously going to continue to bring you guys as much content as we can here in our channel as we always have. Um, we appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please do. And I uh, look forward to a lot more. We're going to do the third party software real soon with the IXL. We'll show you TGC and E6 and Creative Golf and a whole lot more. So stay tuned. Appreciate you watching.